Hey, welcome back. This is Deborah Peters and my podcast, The Neuroscience for Success, with uh, this new series, The Journey of the Mastery of Your Mind. Absolutely thrilled to have you join us today. Um, and thank you for all of our listeners, watchers, subscribers. Thanks for the likes and the shares. Really appreciate it. It's helping us to get this information out to the world because without you, we couldn't do that. And uh, so we're in the tribe building process and we're grateful to have you be part of our tribe. And so with me today is my wonderful, very, very British co-host. Why, hello. <laughs> so happy to work with you guys today. And um, so Richard and I were talking about how we wanna kind of mix up the topic in our program on this uh, particular episode um, because we've had a lot of requests from people wanting to get some tools uh, to be able to focus more. And, um, you know, there's nothing more powerful than a focused mind. And I want to just kind of lead that off with um, saying that, you know, multitasking kind of became this like sort of sexy kind of like, you know, stake in the ground, I'm a great multitasker. And now we've come to realize a decade or whatever later that multitasking is really not that good of an idea. Right, Richard? Oh, it's appalling. It's, it's, it's absolutely appalling. I often say um, that single tasking is, is, is absolute king. You can do 10 to 15 minutes pure single tasking on an activity, on a task, then actually it's worth two to three hours of multitasking. Absolutely. And you know what's interesting on that? So you know I just released my first book, right? Yeah. And um, definitely you guys want to get this because right now for all the people in our tribe, I'm giving it as a gift to you, um, but for a very short period of time. But, you know, one of the things that really – because I've been writing this book all my life <laughs> – one of those things like, yeah, it's an overnight success, but they don't know about the two decades or whatever that went into it before the overnight success hit. And um, what I did was I actually just carved out a couple of days and I put myself into a rhythm. It's all I did. I shut off my phone. I didn't even open my outlook. I didn't look at my email. I didn't even leave my office. It was a bit obsessive, but I knocked out, you know, a full chapter in a morning and then I knocked out another. Ch I did four chapters in two days. It was just like streaming from me. And so, you know, the power of focus is so amazing. It's, it's like a miracle kind of, you know, with, with before that I was doing, okay, 500 words here, 200 words there. And it just kind of seemed to be dragging on. So yes, Focus your mind, pick that outcome, and just really stay the course of that. It'll change your life. I describe it, I compare it to, to um, using a scalpel versus, you you know, using a um, rusty kitchen knife. Yeah, yeah, no, that's really good. You know, I'll tell you, I was teaching a boot camp on the weekend, and I always love to share um, stories of my coaching slash travel experiences. And um, I was sharing with my group, it was a very tight, intimate group of folks, and I was helping them scale up their business and giving them the tools to make that happen. So I was teaching this part on focus and the power of that. And, um, you know, one time I was in London, I think it was like the third or fourth time I was in London. And I always kind of like to stay, you know, sort of in this one area, I'm kind of um, partial to Chelsea and whatnot. So I'm at the gym, it's, you know, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, and I've got a local newspaper up on my elliptical and I'm thumbing through the newspaper, which I never do, but when I'm in a different city, I like to kind of get, you know, a thumb on the pulse of what's going on. And here's this um, interview by this journalist asking, a race car driver, like, what's your secret sauce? You've been winning all these races. Everyone's blown away by how you're just kind of magically showing up and winning these races. What's the deal? 
And um, he told them, like he revealed his entire strategy. Now, anyone that has any sort of a, a mind engineering background could take that strategy and run with it. And, you know, I did. So um, what he said was this, he goes, I do two things. I see myself winning the race and then I drive the car and that's it. I see myself winning the race and then I drive the car. He didn't say, you know, I see myself winning the race, but then I see all these obstacles and then I see like I have this self-talk that's negative and, you know, and then I can hear my mother and my father's voice telling me I'll never be anything. Like none of that's going on for him. He's just a two-step strategy guy. You know, he sees himself winning the race and then he drives the car. So I'm like, wow, this is fantastic. I can use this with my business clients. And um, so I started practicing this process with some of my clients. I focused on this story so much, Richard. I ended up manifesting a professional race car team as a client. And so three years later, I find myself in Salt Lake City at the Grand Am uh, race. I've got three drivers I'm working with and I'm like, okay, tell me your strategy. And they, some of them had four step strategies. Some had five step strategies. And there was all this stuff in the middle that was kind of keeping them from focusing on winning the race. So the big thing they teach professional race car drivers in driving school is really straightforward. They teach them about focus. So when you're in a car and you're going 150, 200 miles an hour, the stakes are high, right? Yeah. Your margin for error is like very, very fine. And so what do they teach them? They teach them to focus on where they want to put the car. They don't tell them to avoid the wall. They don't tell them to avoid the middle barrier. They don't tell them to avoid the other cars. And isn't that kind of like the programming we go through life with? We're trying to avoid failure. We're trying to avoid any kind of pain and suffering. But in professional driving school, they teach them Decide where you want to put that car as part of your winning strategy and focus on it and you will put the car there. Even if there's not room, room will be made. Room will be made. And so this is my point on focus. When you dial in, when you are laser focused, it has to be yours. It has to be yours. It's so true. And, um, what you're talking about there is you're extending focus into visualization and man manifestation. And this is um, so true with, with what happens in our um, bodies and in our minds. So one, one of the things that, you know, as, as, as a behavior expert that I deal with is, is people's sort of anxieties and people's obsessions. And I see it where actually people get so obsessed about, um, their physical health, you know, maybe maybe you know, someone that, that gets that, that is really really heavily anxious about getting breast cancer, but actually they 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 end up almost manifesting it. Absolutely, you know, I had this conversation with some friends the other night. Um, one of my one of my buddies is going through a little you know a little cancer concern, and um, I'm so I said to him like, "Where's your focus? You know, what are you thinking about?" And he goes, "Well." I was thinking about the disease, but now I'm just thinking about uh, like new, it's kind of neutral. Like I don't think about the disease. Uh, I just don't really think about anything. And I said, that's great because you've come from focus over here is the disease. Focus over here is homeostasis. He's in the middle. So he's pulled himself out of that lower vibrational emotional space, right? So now all he has to do is turn his focus toward homeostasis. And it's a small tweak that gives you like tons of rewards. Tons it's of no, rewards. It's no different with, with, with things we're trying to do in our business. It's, every it's, day. It's, and, and, and I know I've already shared with you that, that I go, you know, I start every day with maybe a list of five things to do. Yeah. And actually 
I don't think about because actually, if, if if I wrote down all of the things that that, that need doing, God, I'd, you know, I'd have maybe twenty or thirty things yeah. before we started. But that would just cause me to focus on the overwhelm, cause me to focus on not getting things done. Whereas actually, I choose to focus on a short list of things that I know that I can get done in one day. And that's that a good. I am focused on results. I'm focused on getting those things done. I'm focused on the success of those things. Absolutely, because you know when you uh, have this to-do list. So let's talk about to-do lists for a second, because I think to-do lists are the biggest deterrent from reaching your goals in ever in history. You know, look, it's to-do lists are and and this like mantra of I'm so busy. It's, um, you know, get over yourself because you don't need to be always so busy that you can't take a minute and you don't need to have these massive to-do lists. I can guarantee you if you did do that big to-do list that 90% of the things on that to-do list have nothing to do with your end goal. It's just busy work and it keeps the mind thinking that it's accomplishing a lot. And a year goes by and you're still not hitting the goal. So you're, you're, that's a very smart strategy. You know, you get up, you nail out five things at the most, and they're completely aligned with that end goal. And that's the key because then you're just focusing on smaller versions of the end goal and the cumulative approach takes you there. It just takes you there. It's a bit like so. So so recently, um, it, it was the end of financial year. So I spent a day do, do, um, doing doing our end of year um, accounts, uh, reviewing everything that happened. Now, the important thing that I'm you know, during this conversation is just, just 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 really highlighting to me is that actually I'm not particularly concerned with how we performed last year because that's already done and dusted. I can't change how we performed last year, whether we met our goals or not, is not the issue. The issue is what do we need to do this year to, Im to improve or to keep doing what we did last year. And that's why I, I spend time focusing on um, our end of year accounts and, and looking at the finances and all the rest of it, because it, it's so important that you understand your finances, know what's happening, and at the same time, you know what where you're going, you know what that's going to look like when you move forward. Yeah. One of the things I, I had to do, um, you know, a, a couple of years ago was I had to make um, some people redundant, and now that cost an awful lot of moolah, you know, and that that you know we're talking tens of thousands um, of, of of pounds just 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 being emptied out of the account each month just to just to deal with that. But that wasn't where my focus was. My focus was on where we're going to be after that. What the, you know, the, the purpose of, 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 of re, um, I'm going to say re, reforming my team and cha changing the way that, that we were structured was because actually it made us a lot slicker and a lot more adaptable for our clients' needs in the future. However, we had to go through some pain to go there, to get there. But I didn't spend a great deal of time focused on the pain. I spent the, the time focused on where are we going? How am I going to start moving us into that new slick position? Even though I'm still having to, you know, even though we're we're still going through the end of the redundancies. Yeah, yeah, you know, there's a reason in a vehicle that the rear view mirror is small and the windshield is vast, right? Yeah, you don't absolutely. Look into the past anymore, it's behind you. Like, focus on the future. So, I'd like to give a few tips on what you can do within yourself, because you said, um, you know. And that's a combining, the focus is combining a visual. So what can we give our viewers and listeners as tools to actually uh, get into that mindset? Because focus is a mindset. Busyness is a mindset. Um, multitasking is a mindset. These are just mindsets. And you can change your mindset in like a heartbeat, right? So what can you do? Well... The number one tool, and I'm going to say this probably every podcast as being my um, tincture for everything, and that is the number one tool for being able to focus your mind on what it is you want instead of what is, 
right? So let me let me just frame that a little further before I give the answer. So there's like the friend with the health issue, you know, there's ill health, neutral homeostasis. So there's focus on the past, focus on what is, or focus on the future. So, you know, if you're focused on the past, guess what you're going to get more of? More of the past. Same kind of experiences. Might be different people, might be different city, might be different business, whatever, but it's the same feeling. It's the same feeling. Then there's focusing on the now. Well, if you, if the now is looking like the past, that's the last thing you want to focus on because you're just going to take now and move it into future experiences with your focus. So the only thing you can do if you want new results is to focus on the future. Now, how do you do that? Well, it's a multi-sensory experience. It's a multi-sensory process. Some of us are highly visual. Some of us are highly kinesthetic, which means we roll with our how we feel. Some of us are, are highly auditory, which means we hear things. It takes a little bit of uh, desire, right, and curiosity to find out what your sensory acuity is and what you relate to life, which senses you relate to life through. And it's worth the, uh, it's worth the exploration. It's worth the edu self-education because then you can put yourself into state of focus. So my number one tool for that is to meditate. Look, 5, 10, 15 minutes every morning before you engage in the world is a game changer. It is a game changer. And you'll walk out of that and you'll be in a place of being able to focus on what you want, not on what was and not on what you have. So it's, and we're, we're on our time limit. So what would you like to add to that as a closing remark? And I would say after that, the first thing you need to do is just do every day, do one or two things first thing in the morning you know, when you get to the office when you, when you when you get there that move you towards your goals maybe it means you go into the office half an hour early maybe it means you go into the office or i go into the office 90 minutes before my staff so that actually i know that i've moved us towards our goals even if everyone comes in with problems if, even if some you know if if customer phones up with with an urgent need and we, we you know we need to focus on that for the day actually i know that i've already moved us towards our goals before anything else happens yeah that's brilliant so meditate focus on what you want make a list of the top five things you're going to accomplish that day make sure those top five things are in alignment with your end goal right yeah carve out a new habit and that might be showing up early Right? You want to get Absolutely. more done, start earlier. Cool. Awesome. Great to have you. Thank you, Richard Daniel Curtis. Thank you to all of our viewers. Please stay with us. We've got so much more great, amazing material coming up. And like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Ciao. Have a blessed day. Thank you very much, guys. Please like, comment, tell us a bit more about what you want us to do and connect with us on LinkedIn or Twitter and just talk to us. Yes. Thank you, guys.